Dorothea Lang, the photographer who found the faces of the depression. Written by Carol Boston Weatherford and illustrated by Sarah Green. Because childhood polo left her with a limp and a rolling gait, Dorothea knew how those less fortunate felt without ever walking in their shoes. Kids called her limpy. After her parents split, School-aged Dorothea donned a cloak of invisibility to pass the vagabonds in New York's Bowery neighborhood on walks home alone. Years later, she could walk without fear among demonstrating dock workers to document their bloody strike. Dorothea realized she had eyesight, but was a so-so student who skipped school, didn't like being told what to do, and barely graduated. She said that she aimed to be a photographer. After teacher training school and working part-time in a fashionable Fifth Avenue portrait studio, Dorothea went cross-country with her friend Franzi. They got robbed in San Francisco, and Dorothea wound up working at a department store's photo finishing counter. Within months, she opened her own studio. To break with her past, strong-willed Dorothea took her mother's maiden name, Lang, and donned bold silver jewelry, a jaunty black beret, and flowing skirts to hide her limp. Her studio was an after-work hangout where bohemians drank tea and danced to jazz. Dorothea married Maynard Dixon, a dashing artist who wore cowboy boots, but the marriage was doomed by money troubles and his long painting trips that left her at home, juggling photography with housework and childcare. When her son gave her daisies for Mother's Day, Dorothea photographed the bouquet. But Dorothea's focus was beyond her own family. She saw untold despair from her second story studio window and took her camera to the street. She photographed men waiting outside a soup kitchen. Some still wore suits from their days as businessmen before the stock market crash of 1929 caused the depression. Dorothea hung the picture White Angel Breadline in her studio alongside portraits of her rich clients. Dorothea also tried nature photography. While paused during a thunderstorm on a solo hike, she had an awakening that brought her purpose into focus. She was meant to photograph people, not just the wealthy, but from all walks of life. Dorothea stepped behind the camera and out into the world. On San Francisco's Skid Row, she photographed men sleeping on sidewalks, leaning against storefronts, and a man slumped beside an overturned wheelbarrow. Economics professor Paul Taylor was drawn to Dorothea's street photos in an Oakland gallery and invited her to illustrate an article of his. Before long, she joined him in his field work. Dorothea took pictures of Paul's interview subjects. The two were kindred spirits and eventually married. Dorothea was moved by the life histories uncovered by Paul's team of researchers. She began jotting down quotes and field notes and pairing her images and captions in photo essays. More than a photographer, she was a storyteller with a camera. The government soon hired her as a field investigator. With a bulky box camera, Dorothea hit the road to show America to Americans. What others neglected or ignored, she noticed and preserved on film. An ex-slave in Alabama, sharecroppers in the South, migrant workers out West, rural poverty programs, and later during World War II, Japanese Americans in internment camps. Dorothea's subjects were scattered in different regions. She sometimes drove hundreds of miles a day, going slow to study the scenery. At each stop, she climbed onto her car's roof and surveyed the surroundings. Then she set up a tripod and a small camera that never failed to attract children. After posing for pictures, they hurried to tell their parents. That was Dorothea's way of meeting the adults. She knew how to put her subjects at ease, so they would share their struggles and strivings. One day, through driving rain, she spotted a sign for a migrant camp. Although ending a month-long assignment and yearning for home, Dorothea drove into the wet and soggy camp and parked. Rains had destroyed the pea crop, and with it, hopes for work. Laborers were breaking camp and leaving, but Dorothea approached a family that was staying put. For days they had eaten only wild birds and frozen vegetables from the fields and had sold their car's tires to buy food. 
Dust storms had driven them out of Oklahoma to the west to work as farm laborers. Now the family was stranded and starving. Dorothea shot a half dozen or so pictures of the mother and her children. The last a close-up of the woman's deeply lined face. She looks much older than her 32 years. After two of the photos ran in the newspaper, the government rushed 10 tons of food to the camp. Because Dorothea turned her lens on hunger and poverty, Florence Owens Thompson, a full-blooded Cherokee, became the face of the Great Depression, and the nation could not look the other way.